this was the biggest disaster I had ever covered until that point, probably the biggest disaster I've, I've covered since then as well. The phone rang, pack a bag, get to Heathrow Airport, you're going to Thailand. At seven o'clock, we hear from our own correspondents about their memories reporting on the Boxing Day tsunami 20 years on. But first, remembering the devastating tsunami which hit coastlines across the Indian Ocean on Boxing Day 20 years ago. An estimated 230,000 people lost their lives in the disaster, which flattened towns and cities and badly impacted the lives of millions. ICV News teams reported on the aftermath of the tsunami and the desperate attempts of communities to recover. Well, in a new documentary, our correspondents and camera crews look back at their experiences. It includes our senior international correspondent, John Irvine, who was on an island in Thailand with his young family when the wave struck. Here, they recall what they witnessed. One moment, it was paradise. The next, hell on earth. At least 11,000 people are dead, drowned by the terrifying power of a colossal tidal wave. It was caused by a massive undersea earthquake off the coast of Indonesia. This was the biggest disaster I had ever covered until that point, probably the biggest disaster I've, I've covered since then as well. That wave oh is a good God. 15, 20 feet tall. Easy. Get in, get in, get in. The phone rang pack a bag, get to Heathrow Airport, you're going to Thailand. Right across the Indian Ocean it came, a roaring, pounding shock wave, sweeping away everything and everyone in its path. This was completely off the scale. It was a sight that will stay with me forever. Myself and my family who are here on holiday, obviously we're on the beach and I, I noticed uh, a line way out to sea. I reckon it was about a mile out. It was a line of what looked to be white foam. I heard a commotion on the nearby beach and when I went down there a wall of water was coming our way. And this was a threat not just to me but it was a, an immediate threat to my family. Libby looked at me and she said I can't see Peter. He was standing ankle deep in water stock still mesmerized by the wave that was coming our way. We listened to the wave breaking on the beach. There was a big bang as it came through those trees. I suppose we'd reached about here before we were, we were washed away. We were lucky enough to find Libby and Elizabeth. They were again battered and bruised. Elizabeth had been in the beach hut. We were just sitting on the high ground, looking out to sea, counting our blessings. And I saw this woman, another tourist, who had a mobile phone and I begged her and she kindly let me use the phone. So I phoned the news desk in London. I, you know, I said something like, you'll never believe what, what's happened to me. And they said, actually, we've got an idea. Banda Aceh, its famous mosque shrouded in smoke. The clock frozen at 8.30, the time, the date, the year. Indonesia will never forget. I remember f kind of circling over the airport and just it looked as if a nuclear bomb had gone off in the centre. There was barely a building left standing near the coast. And then I really vividly remember as we left the airport, uh, the first roundabout we came to was just piled up with dead bodies. Um, and that continued as we drove into the city. This is the scene in the port area perhaps one of the most devastated sectors of this crippled town. There were huge big ships that had been washed inshore, um, you know, almost the size of sort of tankers that had been taken about a mile inshore. Um, extraordinary sights, boats perched on the top of, of houses and so on. So some really uh, remarkable, distressing scenes which, which I'll never forget. They erected the notice boards to put the photographs of the missing in row upon row upon row. And our camera point uh, from where we were broadcasting was just a, a, you know, a couple of metres away, a few metres away from that spot. That human stance of people just standing with their hands over their mouths, that point at which there are no, there are no words. It was absolutely heartbreaking to witness. 
the people who lived locally, they were taking it upon themselves to come and support the news teams who were there. And I just remember um, a young Thai woman coming over with some home-cooked food in a dish and just said, I, you know, I thought, I thought you might, might like some food to keep you going. And, you know, that's one of those stories in the middle of a disaster. There will always be somebody doing that. It hit with brutal speed. As they were swept along, people gripped onto anything they could to stop them being dragged away. For some, the surge was too powerful. The effort, just too much. It was an astonishing story that spread across quite a swathe of the world and it will undoubtedly be one of the enduring memories not just of my career but my life. And you can watch the full documentary featuring John, Dan and Julie on ITVX and on our website itv.com slash news.